Hi everyone, my name is Ananya and I'm a software engineer on the Platform Developer Tools team here at Salesforce. Today, I'm going to help you get efficient with your Salesforce development. So the first thing you might notice is that the screen doesn't look quite exactly like Visual Studio Code. And that's because it's not. Today, we're working inside of a brand new product called Salesforce Code Builder, currently in Pilot. Code Builder is a development environment that runs in your browser. So you get access to modern tooling through the Salesforce extensions while keeping your developer console flow of going to your org and clicking a button to open a new tab with your workspace. So today I'm going to go through my usual flow in developer console here inside of Code Builder. The first thing I always do is make sure I'm authorized into an org. So if you click on the org picker down here, it pops open a list of all the different orgs you previously authenticated into and it gives you the option of authorizing a new org, a dev hub, or creating a default scratch org. For now, I've already authenticated into an org, which you can see by the text demo run down here. Cool. So now let's open up the class that I was working on on Friday. I have a feeling that someone on my team may have worked on it over the weekend, so I want to compare what I have locally to what might exist in my org. I can do this by hitting right click and hitting diff file against org. What this does is it grabs a file from your org and pops it open on the left hand side and shows you what you have locally on the right side. And I can see very clearly that obviously something has changed. So let's make sure that I have the most up to date version. I could do that by right clicking and hitting retrieve the source from org, but then I wouldn't get to show off our super cool org browser. So if you look at this cloud icon here, it opens up a list of all the different metadata types that you have available to you in your org. If you expand on one of them, you can see all the different components associated with that metadata type. For now, I'm going to hit the download icon so that I can retrieve the latest version. And it's letting me know that I am going to overwrite what I have locally. Cool. So now that I have my up-to-date test class, let's actually run this test. I can do that by hitting this beaker icon on the left side and it pops open this view that is going to show me all of the Apex tests that I have available up here. And you might notice it is also showing me the Lightning Web Component tests that I have. Because another cool feature of Code Builder and VS Code is that you're able to work with your Lightning Web Components and Aura Components in here as well. For now, let's go ahead and run my test set brightness. And while that's running, you might notice that this text over here also gives you the option of running the test from directly inside of the class as well. Awesome. And I can see that my test is run successfully from this green dot, and it is showing me all the code coverage that I need down here. The thing is, I'm more of a visual person, so I would rather see exactly how much of my class is being covered. And I can do that by hitting this little hamburger icon down here. This is going to show up on the right hand side and it lets me know that the ones in green are the ones that are covered by my test and the ones in red are the ones that are yet to be covered which is great okay cool so now that we've run our test we know it's successful i want to get a deeper look into what exactly is happening with our test class and i want to use our replay debugger to do that so the first thing i'll do is set a few breakpoints on the left side here and now there's a few different commands you need to use to set up the replay debugger. The first thing is going to be turn on Apex debug log for replay debugger. You can tell that I already have done this step because down here it's showing me that I'm recording my logs until 12.43 a.m. Next thing you want to do is actually get the Apex debug logs. So essentially what's going on in the background is that we've turned on logging for any events that you're doing within your org. So after these logs get generated in your org, you then have to go ahead and download them using the get apex debug log command we just ran. And now that I have my debug log open, I can hit right click and hit launch apex replay debugger. And what this will do is it's going to launch the native VS code debugger and allow me to step through all those breakpoints that I set earlier. And if I wanted, I could have also launched it using this green arrow on the right hand, left hand side. Cool. So now if I hit next, I can see I am stepping into the test method that I set all of my breakpoints inside of, and I'm getting to see exactly what's going on. So thank you all for joining me today. I know we went over a lot of information, but 
I hope you enjoyed your sneak peek into the new Salesforce Code Builder. And again, everything that we covered today is currently available in Visual Studio Code, so make sure to check it out. Thank you!